Game development is a big undertaking, with different kinds of expertise, technologies, and processes coming together to make the final game. We've asked Ubisoft developers to explain some of these techs and methods to give you a better understanding of what takes place behind the scenes to make our games. One key technology that underlies game development is the game engine. You might know of some freely available engines like Unity or Unreal, but what exactly does a game engine do, and which ones do we use at Ubisoft? Let's find out. The game engine is core technologies that work together to help facilitate the creation of games, giving a suite of building blocks that game designers and level designers and content creators can utilize, connecting them together to make the content they want. That means that you can make shaders, complex NPC behaviors, level ingredients, mission designs, and then with a press of a button, launch the game and actually see what they created and find what is actually fun in the game experience. At Ubisoft, we are focusing our attention on our two main game engines. Anvil Next, which you'll know from Assassin's Creed series, Steep, and For Honor, and Snowdrop, where I'm working. We developed Snowdrop to empower our content creators and all the people developing games at Ubisoft. We made it flexible so it can make a variety of games. The fact that it was made for Division 1 and Division 2, but was capable of making such disparate games as South Park, Mario Rabbids, Starlink, Settlers, and Avatar. Developers have many technologies and tools at their disposal to build games, but how do game designers make the game come to life and ensure that it's actually fun to play? That's where the three C's of game design come in handy. How the player moves through the level, how they engage with it, how they perceive that level, that's three C's. Three C's is where your game comes to life. Three C's stands for character, camera, and controls. The reason why we describe these things as one unit, it's less about one feature, and it's more about the relationship between those features that overall describes the game feel and basically dictates the overall player experience. A good camera is one that you don't have to adjust. It adjusts to your gameplay experience depending on whether you're on foot, whether you're in car, whether you're in a fight. It's adjusting to your needs and presenting the game world and its opportunities. When we talk about character, we're talking about the player's avatar, their representation in game. So for example, in a first-person shooter, it's the hands and the weapon. But in third person, you're going to see the entire character on screen. In a driving game, it's the vehicle itself. It's whatever form the player is controlling at that time. So a good character for me is one that feels responsive. So when I make an input, I see a reaction in the game. I want to feel that direct connection to my character. But also I'm looking for something that grounds me in that experience. So as I'm moving through the environment, how is that fed back to me in something like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, when you move through the mud, that your clothes become increasingly dirty. It's a way of grounding the player in the experience, in the environment that they're moving through. So when we're looking at controls, we're thinking about accessibility, making sure the biggest number of people can play your game, but also ergonomics. We need to consider how it's going to be played and where it's going to be played to make sure that the controls feel logical and comfortable. So if you'd like to look at this like a developer, the next time you're playing a game, take a look at the three C's and how it's informing that overall player experience. Look at the relationship between the character, the camera and the controls, and how it's informing that game feel. At some point in game development, the team needs to switch gears and go from building and creating the game to actually finishing it. In the run-up to release, there's one milestone in particular that teams love to celebrate with the world. So, you might often see on social media um, a game announcing that it's gone gold. But the question is, what does that actually mean? You may not know this already, so I'm going to tell you. So when we say that a game has gone gold, it means that the game has been approved for manufacture. So that can be Sony, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Nintendo, whichever platforms we're targeting for that specific game. The game is fully playable, um, it's, it's stable, it's got a decent level of performance, um, and everything's basically working. Um, and also that we've passed all of the compliance requirements from those first parties, and they have basically said, yep, off you go to manufacture. Uh, and then we start making the discs from there. So the term going gold comes from uh, when this was all done on physical discs. It's digital now, but when this 
was physical discs, the ones that were sent to the manufacturer companies with that version of the game on that is, has been given the thumbs up, they were gold coloured um, and so we still use that term today. So when we go gold, it doesn't mean that all the work is done for the team. Um, we usually go to manufacture about six to eight weeks before launch, so there's some time there that we can use to properly polish the game and fix things like stability and little niggly issues that might impact the gameplay when we go live. So one of my best memories from, from shipping a game is when we were working on uh, the Division 2. Uh, and we decided quite last minute there that we wanted to make some improvements to the onboarding and tutorials right at the beginning of the game. So what that involved was me running around the office, just speaking to people, trying to see what was possible, what was safe to do, what changes we could make that were really going to improve everything. Um, and it was great to be able to work that tiny bit of magic right at the end that was going to improve the experience for everyone. So when a game goes gold, that's quite a big milestone for the team. Uh, it means that something that they've been working on for quite a few years is almost ready to go. So remember to give them a shout out when you hear a game's gone gold. Uh, it means that we're all really excited to see you get your hands on the final product. Is there an aspect of game design and production that you'd like to know more about? Let us know in the comments below so we can make more explainer videos just like this one.